Thumbs up to Jared Aberderis, the senior wide receiver, was just phenomenal tonight. Um, what more can you say about him? The real impressive thing is that UW doesn't really have a receiving threat beside him with Jacob Patterson, um, the star tight end out. He really put all of the emphasis on Jared Aberderis, and Ohio State still couldn't stop him. Just a great game, 207 yards. He keeps climbing the UW's all-time uh, receiving list. He's going to go down as one of the best to uh, ever play receiver for the Badgers. Thumbs down, UW's offensive line. You know, I've been a little hesitant to heap too much praise on this group just because of the level of competition they've played to this point. And, you know, tonight I think a lot of their weaknesses got exposed. Ohio State's a real quick team, got some good rudge ushers, and um, UW just had difficulty dealing with them and the crowd noise. I mean, UW had five false starts tonight, and three of them were on the offensive line. Um, there was a couple holding calls and a couple sacks. Just was not a good, good night for UW's offensive line. Give my game ball to Braxton Miller, Ohio State quarterback. Threw four touchdown passes against a team that hadn't allowed a touchdown pass all season. I thought Miller was phenomenal. No visible sign of rust after missing the last, pretty much the last three games because of injury, a knee injury. And uh, he was just phenomenal. I thought he made some plays with his feet, and his throws, for the most part, were right on target. Threw a lot of lasers and just really helped Ohio State win this game. By the numbers, I'll give you a bonus number that didn't make it in the paper, and that's 17.6. That was UW's average starting position tonight, the 17.6 yard line. Just was a rough night. And it's tough to win on the road when you have to when you start your drive so far from the end zone, it just makes you grind out long drives and um, UW couldn't do that enough tonight. It just seemed like every time they got the ball they were, you know, inside the twenty certainly, and a lot of times they're inside the ten and it is a, it's kind of a tough The view, let's start with how the Badgers see it, and stop me if you've heard this one before, but it's another close defeat where they're left saying, if we could have made this play or if we could have made that play, we'd have won. I know they're getting frustrated, not only losing, but talking about it afterwards. How the fans see it, I think it's probably set in by now. If it hasn't, it should have, that Urban Meyer and the Buckeyes are going to be the team to beat in this conference for a while, at least as long as he stays around. Probably a good thing that the Badgers and Buckeyes are going to split into opposite divisions. How the pollsters see it, I think there's probably some in the national media that are relieved after seeing Wisconsin lose and seeing their Big Ten title hopes take a hit. There's probably some people that are just sick of seeing the Badgers in Pasadena. I know the fans would love to see them go back there for one more try, but I'm sure nobody in the national media is crying about seeing Wisconsin uh, lose to Ohio State and face an uphill climb to the Big Ten title.